The ancient Chinese philosopher Zhuangzi dreamt that he became a butterfly. He enjoyed himself so much that when he woke up, he wondered if he had dreamed of becoming a butterfly or if he was a butterfly who was dreaming that he was Zhuangzi. It is hard to distinguish a man from a butterfly or the dream world from reality. The beauty of Kun Chu opera manifests itself in that border between reality and fantasy. In the early stages of Kun Chu opera, some well-known plays were dream-related. In the spring of 1955, the writer Ding Ling read in a newspaper that a Kuen Chu opera troupe was performing the Peony Pavilion and the Palace of Long Life. At the time, Kuen Chu opera was on the brink of extinction. While enjoying the classical plays on the bank of Westlake, Ding Ling felt as if she were traveling back in time. In the famous work, The Peony Pavilion, there is the following line. As the flowers, if we can freely love, supposing there is, no death can do us apart. Neither bitterness nor distress shall break our heart. This shows the tinge of sadness in many Chinese literary works. Throughout its 600-year history, Kuen Chu has moved countless people to tears. Kuenchu opera evolved from Kuenqiang melody. It's a relatively new form of opera that emerged in the Ming dynasty. Each type of performing art is an outcome of the continuation and development of certain earlier forms, and Kuenchu is no exception. In the summer of the year 1234 AD, the southern Song army, in allegiance with Mongolian troops, captured Taizhou, the capital of the Jin dynasty, and exterminated the once powerful regime. This event had an unexpected influence on Kun Chu. With their cavalry, the Mongolians established an empire, but they were incapable of administering the country. Over nearly 100 years, only around a thousand scholars were selected through examinations and installed in government. Excluded from government, scholars found in opera a way to vent their frustrations and create a shrine to themselves. Zaju opera playwright Guan Hanqing claimed that he is the head of entertainers and leader of actors and that he admires the moon over a royal garden drinks the best wine, appreciates the most beautiful peonies, and dates the hottest women. Although in appearance he seemed to be something of a cynical dandy, in point of fact he was a man with a truly great mind who had no choice but to kill his time in theatre. 
Under such circumstances, many scholars tried to find spiritual consolation by writing lyrics for arias. Zhaju opera in the Jin and Yuan dynasties, also known as Northern Opera, became extremely popular. In southern China, unsuccessful officials, businessmen, and literati gathered in Lin An, present-day Hangzhou. The Southern Song Imperial Court had been weak for a long time, and it was living in the threat of the Mongolian troops. These people from Southern Song treated life itself as a play, and at the same time, they learned to create plays in real life. Consequently, country operas and folk melodies born in the area around Wenzhou underwent great development. Musical accompaniment, singing, and acting were combined with diverse melodies. As a result, southern opera with its own distinct style came into being. Kunchu opera originated from Kunqiang melody, one of the four so-called melodies of southern opera. Wei Liangfu, born in Suzhou in the early Ming dynasty, perfected Kunqiang melody, making it a dominant art form. In his youth, Wei Liangfu had studied northern opera, but with little success. Then, he turned to studying southern opera. One day, Wei Liangfu overheard a young man sing a northern opera aria accompanied by a stringed instrument. The tune was in perfect rhythm. The singer was Zhang Yetang, a notable composer of music for stringed instruments in northern opera. Zhang had been exiled to Suzhou, and he served as a granary guard. Wei Liangfu was deeply attracted by the young man singing. Historical documents say that Wei and Zhang studied metrics and temperament, and they were engrossed by it. Three days and nights had passed before they realized it, but after that, they became lifelong friends. According to the characteristics of local music in southern Jiangsu and northern Zhejiang, Wei and Zhang decided to accompany Kunqiang melody plays with numerous instruments such as various stringed instruments, woodwinds, drums and clappers. For ten solid years, Wei Liangfu concentrated on the pentatonic scale and he came up with a new type of melody. Because the singing was delicate, slow, and mild, it was called watermill melody. Through the efforts of Wei Liangfu, Kuinchu opera was greatly developed. Wei was later honored as the founder of Kuinchiang melody. Kunchu opera, a blending of the soul of northern and southern opera, 
became the dominant art form on the Chinese stage, giving rise to a unique aesthetic form. In Kuen Chu Opera, different characters are played by four different roles. The four typical roles in Kuen Chu Opera are Sheng, Dan, Qing, and Chou. The headdress male role of Sheng is handsome. He wears a square scarf on his head and holds a fan in his hand. He's also known as the fan roll. This kind of young male role is good looking and debonair and naturally he acts as the hero in romantic plays. The Dan refers to any female role it's subdivided into young, middle-aged, and elderly roles. This subtype of Dan, for instance, is often a beautiful young woman. She should be reserved, demure, and charming in the plays. The Jiang is also called the painted face role, looking dignified and valiant. Emperors, loyal court officials, and deities are acted by the painted face roles. The Cho is a comic role that is clumsy and hilarious. The roles in Kuen Chu are based on categories of stage characters and each has its own stylized performing pattern. The blending of singing and dancing, as well as real and symbolic movements, makes for a free and unrestrained performance. On the Kuen Chu stage, bodily movements are very symbolic. For instance, a slanted horsewhip pointing upward suggests high mountains. A horsewhip slanting downwards, flowing water. An actor with a whip walking on stage is going to portray a long journey on horseback. According to traditional Chinese aesthetic principles, a blank space is a highly expressive device. In Kun Chu opera, neither a fierce battlefield nor a snow-covered plain, nor flowers over a wall, nor a bamboo forest is presented with props or stage scenes. Elegant dancing and the expressive eye movements of the actors draw the audience into such poetic scenes.
In the West, musical notation is used to indicate key, pitch, and tempo. Guanchu has its own form of notation called Gongchu. Gongchu notation uses Chinese characters to represent musical notes. They're written beside the words in the lyric. The seven Chinese characters Shang, Chu, Gong, Fan, Liu, Wu, Yi in Gongchu notation can be used to present the musical scale from the tonic to the seventh. Today, with the help of this notation, we can play melodies composed hundreds of years ago. Each Kunchu play consists of 40 to 50 acts. It takes two or three days to stage a complete play. The list of plays in Kunchu is like an extended corridor. Each part can be dismounted and reassembled. Each part is independent, having its own aesthetic value. This loose and elastic structure is completely different from that of the well-organized Western theater. Kunchu presents a unique beauty in the free expression of Eastern art and the unique life force that is Chinese opera. After continuous development and perfection, during the middle and later periods of the Ming Dynasty, the creation of Kunshu plays reached its summit. At that time, the great dramatist Tang Xianzu came into focus. At the age of 33, Tang Xianzu, a lifelong lover of nature, became a successful candidate in the highest imperial examinations and served as a minor official. However, he became resentful towards senior Grand Secretary Shen Xiexing, who, to the nation's detriment, controlled politics at court. Tang submitted a memorial to impeach him, and because of this, he lost any chance for promotion. At the age of 49, he indignantly retired from office. Back home, Tang Xianzu devoted his time to the creation of Kun Chu plays, and over the span of 20 years, he created five legendary plays that have all survived. The most famous of Tang Xianzu's works is the Peony Pavilion. Du Bao, a prefect of Nanan, has a daughter, Du Linyang. One day, she is strolling in her back garden and falls into a slumber there. In a dream, she falls in love with a scholar, Liu Mengmei. After she wakes up, she becomes heartsick, and eventually she dies from melancholy. Three years later, Liu Mengmei stays overnight at the Meihua Taoist Temple on his way to the imperial examination. There, he finds a self-portrait of Du Liniang and meets with her spirit. Inevitably, he falls in love with the beautiful young lady. Liu Mengmei opens her tomb and Du Linyang comes to life again. The lovers overcome the obstacles imposed by convention and they finally get married. In his foreword to the Peony Pavilion, Tang Xianzu writes, Who knows what the cause of love is and what the result of love is? What is it? that makes people so passionate in love. For genuine love, people can give their lives and the dead can come to life again.
In 1668, Hong Sheng, a scholar from Tiantang, became a student in the Imperial College. As Hong Sheng had a personality that was unrestrained and was conceited and contemptuous of others, he didn't receive any government post. He then turned all his attention to creating dramas. A new play based on historical events, The Palace of Long Life, tells the love story between Tang Dynasty Emperor Li Longji and his concubine, Yang Yuhuan. Only when the emperor departs the dead concubine do they understand the meaning of hypocrisy. The sincere love between them becomes purer. Another Kuen Chu masterpiece is The Peach Blossom Fan, written by Kung Shangren during the reign of King Emperor Kang Xi. Kung was a 64th generation descendant of Confucius. Through the love story of Li Xiangjun, a courtesan at the Qinhuai River, and Ho Fang Yu, a renowned scholar, The Peach Blossom Fan tells of the decline and fall of the Southern Ming Dynasty. Coincidentally, these two plays created during the same period possess similar narrative threads about love and about the people's bitterness and remorse over the fall of their kingdom. Both plays present history through the medium of art. The two authors had parallel life experiences too. Both experienced sudden downfalls. the Palace of Long Life tactfully convey a sober-minded consciousness of history and politics imbued with a humanist spirit. The two plays were staged for more than 300 years, marking a rarely scalable height in the creation of Kuen Chu in the Qing Dynasty. The prosperity of Kuen Chu opera is ascribed to the preferences of high society and scholars' engagement in it, but even elite culture cannot resist the trend of commercial development. Today, few people try to appreciate Kuen Chu. The lonesomeness of Kuen Chu and their busy society seem to be worlds apart. Who can understand the complex feelings of Du Li Nian? Who can give his life for love? It is perhaps relevant to return to the story of the Peony Pavilion to sense the frenzy for love expressed in this Kuen Chu masterpiece. Tu Lin Yang is a young lady shackled by feudal ethics. When she first enters her rear garden, the beautiful scenery stuns her. But in the flowery garden, 
Du Linyang feels a melancholy she had never known before. Du Linyang, for the first time in her life, sees the beauty of nature, and in her dream she falls in love with a scholar by the name of Liu Mengmei. But how can this damsel, who has never even entered her own garden, have a rendezvous with her sweetheart? The lovelorn Du Linyang dies from lovesickness. After this, she and Liu Mengmei, who is also heartsick, are in different worlds. But at the end of the story, Tang Xianzu helps the lovers. Even though one is living and the other dead, he brings them together in a scene that is dreamlike. Who can explain what love is? Love that makes people this passionate. If we can't meet each other in reality, perhaps we may fulfill our wishes through dreams.